Hey guys, Andy here. I have with me today the Nexus 5 and the Moto G from Motorola. Both, you could say, Google products. Um, I'm just going to do some head-to-head -head tests. It's not massively scientific. I know a lot of people don't like the test that I do. Why do I do a speaker test? Why do I do, I'm going to do a boot test. I haven't done it for a long time. Why do I do a boot test? Um, I'm just going to throw information at you, really, and you pick out from it what you wish. If you don't like one of the tests, don't worry about it. Move on. Or make your own video. I'd love to see it. So, as I said, I actually started with the boot test. I've done it for a long time. Um, doesn't necessarily give you any useful information. You know, you're going to boot your phone up maybe once every week, even, perhaps. Um, obviously, the Nexus 5 is running KitKat, Android 4.4. The Moto G is running um, Jelly Bean 4.3. So, there will be some differences based on that. Again, and a lot of people say, well, if you kind of compare the hardware, the software's got to be identical. Wow, look how quick that booted. Just to complete it, because normally I say you've got to go into the launcher. There it is. So not massively behind, but a little bit behind. This is running Nova Launcher, I should say, and that's on stock. Um, just so you're aware as well, I've got both of them, the brightness cranked up to full. Um, just so you kind of get an idea of what the screens look like. The LCD on the Nexus 5, you can see, does that, you know, that backlight kind of does affect it. Whereas you can see, mind you, that's also, it's not totally, but it's slightly opaque, so it doesn't, it's not the best comparison I suppose. So Moto G very quick to boot. Let's move on to another test. First up good old-fashioned Angry Birds opening test. Slide out to the Nexus 5 at this point. Yeah. That's quite, a, quite an easy win in the end. We'll do once more just to be sure. So clearly the, the Nexus 5 wins that. You could argue, uh, well of course it does, because it's got a faster processor. We have a quad core, we have a quad core, but we've got 2.3 against 1.2. So you would imagine, you know, that shouldn't really surprise anyone, but then at the same time, we saw how quickly the Moto G booted. So uh, you never know, I suppose, in some ways. I'm gonna do a benchmark test now. And by request, I've, uh, I've purchased Geekbench 3. You can see there actually, just as a bit of a comparison, the blacks on the Moto G look, look a lot blacker. The Nexus 5 they actually look a little bit grey. See the memory differences, we see there the processors I mentioned before, 2.3 against 1.2. Now I don't know exactly how this works just yet, oh there we go, we're off, we're off straight away. Um, the Nexus 5 looks to be flying through the test. Again, I'm not, <laughs> maybe I should have run this before, I don't actually know how this one works. Um, I guess I'll probably... Uh, Come back to you when we've got a result. So we can see the Nexus 5 has finished already. The Moto G not even halfway through. Again, maybe, maybe I'm really being quite unfair pitting the one against the other when we've got a 2.3 against a 1.2. But, um, I don't know, some people have been asking questions, should I get the Moto G instead of the Nexus 5? The, you know, that is a choice that some people are making. So I'm just trying to help out, I suppose, with, uh, with you know, letting you see the differences. Here we go, it looks like it's about to finish. There we go. So you can see the single core score, well, I mean, both of them are almost three times as, as big. Um, so that is a pretty hefty difference. It does kind of, I don't know, bring you back to reality, I suppose. I'm looking at the Moto G, it seems a really nice device. It seems amazing. You think, how on earth can they do it for 135, well, 130 pounds? And then you see that score and you kind of think, okay, yeah, it is a budget phone. It, is, it isn't necessarily gonna to hold its, you know, hold its own against the, the top end the top end devices. Uh, just in case, again, I've not used this before, but if some of you want to see some of the individual scores, 
two fish motor car, you can see it well, you do yeah, all the way through, you see it whooping, the next five whooping the Moto G. Well, it seems quite a thorough benchmarking app, doesn't it? Goodness. Testing the memory. Still a big gaps there. There we go. So Yeah, so there we go. The, uh, the Nexus 5 clearly winning that one. Okay, I'm going to move on to the GPS test. Uh, I'm going to reset both of them, come back out. I'm just going to show you, because I can on the, the Nexus. It is on a high accuracy mode. That got questioned in the last one because it basically performed so poorly. Um, and then again, today I was at the gym. So they've both downloaded the assistive data. But I was in the gym earlier, there's quite a lot of windows, I'm reasonably near the windows, it just couldn't lock onto a satellite. So already the Moto G, oh, we're getting a bit of a twitch on it, okay, we've got one, three against one. Obviously I'm indoors now, um, I'm in the roof, in a converted roof though, so. Four, and normally most devices will look like that, so neither of them doing particularly well. The Moto G is locked on the Nexus, and I would point out, I'm almost certain that the Nexus that I used in my last one against the S4 is a different device to this one, that was the black 16 gig I believe, and I'm now on my white 32 gig, and it's, I mean, it's got four of them properly locked, but it's still, it's not actually determined my location. It really is quite disappointing, I was saying, oh, it's gone down to two. Now, I can tell you, because you might be thinking, if you were thinking of buying the Nexus 5 and you're worried by this, if you're outdoors, it seems to lock pretty quick and pretty easily, so it might just be, well, I don't really know, to be honest, what it might be. Um, but I've not, you know, I've used, I've used sat-nav on the Nexus 5, no problems at all. But it is, that is quite rare, it's not, it's not going to lock at all, is it? Sorry, sorry for those of you that I'm sure I'm going to get some more heat again. Why, why are you doing this? But this is just what's happening, like it's the second device that I've had, and it's struggling to lock indoors. Outdoors won't be a problem. If I even let me let me just see. I'm going to go off camera for a second. I'm going to hold it a bit nearer the window. I know you can't see what's going on. Just to see if it's locked a third one now, but it can still only see five. But it's not. It's not. Oh, it's locked a fourth one. It's locked a fifth one. Is it going to get a location? Still not. Just to show you, it's got five out of six. It might lose them now. I've brought it back in. So yeah, the, what, what is with the Nexus 5's GPS? I have seen some threads on XDA with other people saying they've had problems. Some people even sent them back, so maybe, maybe while I use the Moto G, I should I should see about sending this back. But I don't know. Please give me comments. I'm sure there's loads of people who are saying, "Oh, mine locks on just like that." Um, don't know. Don't know what I can tell you. So the Moto G wins that one. We're gonna move on to the speaker test. I much argued from my last. Uh, my last head-to-head -head speaker test. Now, yep, I do accept that generally you won't be listening to music through your phone, sat on a desk, but quite often your phone will be sat on a desk and it's going to ring and a lot of people have music as ringtones. Um, I'll do a podcast as well afterwards to get, get a sort of uh, example of the voice. This is all about just getting an idea for the volume of the speaker. So, we'll start off, I'll play a bit of... Should point out as well. Just well, I should check. Yeah, that's a full volume. That's a full volume. I would say quite clearly the Moto G is louder, quite a lot louder. Sound quality, debatable, you could say the Nexus 5 sounds a little better, but the volume definitely isn't there. Um, let's move on to 
If I can find, there it is, that's what I want. Oh, sure, there we go. On my left, a man who first became fascinated in the wonders of the universe when he was only 38 years old. On my left, a man who first became fascinated in the wonders of the universe when he was only 38 years old and offered some money by the BBC to do a series with that name. Though so again, you can really hear the difference. Yeah, Faraday is one of the heroes that we are profiling in the upcoming Cosmos. He taught us how to tame electrons. These are things... Didn't, that's why you yes. said yes. Now, this no is the idea. point where I confess the terrible thing that you know secretly, which is, in fact, I'm an art historian, not a scientist. <laughs> no, that's right, John. Again, I mean, the one, the, the thing, well, oopsie daisy, the thing perhaps aside, um, the GPS possible issue, but I've not really, in, in actual reality, I've not noticed any issue. Aside that, the one thing that really annoys me about the Nexus 5 is that quiet speaker. Maybe there's a software patch coming, but I, th you know, I think it's a, surely it's a hardware thing, not a software thing. So I think you have to give that to the Moto G. Okay, we're going to try and do a browser test. Um, I'm going to fairly randomly just pick, let's go with Formula One. Whoa, they're both very quick. The Nexus probably a bit smoother in the scrolling, don't you think? Let's try iPlayer. I think that was the edge to uh, the Nexus 5. You can take your pick on which is smooth. I think the Nexus 5 is smoother as well. Let's come back. Let's try one more. What else have we got? Waitrose. Yeah, that one quite clearly, the Nexus 5 was quicker. Um, they're both on Wi-Fi, they're both on the same network, they've both got the same network speed. So that was purely about the rendering ability of each device, and the Nexus 5 showed us what it can do there. So what or not, I think the Moto G didn't do too bad. Obviously it's got a very much underpowered processor compared to the Nexus 5, but the other elements of it, so the, uh, the speaker, um, GPS, you know, they seem pretty good, uh, better than the Nexus 5 in some ways. Whether or not I think this deserves to be in the same competition with the Nexus 5, maybe not, maybe not. But it's done itself proud, I think. For £135, you, you can't go too far wrong with that Moto G. There'll be other comparisons as well. Subscribe if you haven't already to make sure you don't miss out. My name's Andy, I'll catch you all again soon.